Oh, look at that. Well, 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 isn't this something? It actually worked. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, they actually have been having trouble because there's so much streaming going on right now that uh, both YouTube and Facebook are having a, a bit of bit of a uh, time trying to keep keep up. Um, but nonetheless, uh, here we are. Uh, as I had uh, promised, this is the first in a series of uh, these little workshops I'm going to be doing called Healing the World in the Mind of the Healer. Uh, and before we get started, I'd, I would like to invite people to just say hi, make sure that you can uh, you can all hear me well. Not muffled or anything weird that the sound is good and and it's clear it's also really enjoyable for me to know uh, the, uh where you are where you're watching this from the um the system will tell me whether you're on facebook or on youtube because i'm actually uh broadcasting to both simultaneously here uh, there is a slight delay a slightly longer delay than normal so I may not see your questions and comments as uh, quickly. You know, the, it takes a moment for you to hear me, then a moment for you to ask a question, and then a moment for me to re to re respond. So uh, just uh, be be patient, uh, and we will uh, make sure everything we want is is covered. Sound video is a bit blurred. Um, the video quality. Let me let me check the video quality. It's the blurriness, uh, if the video is blurry, first you can check down in the little gear in the right-hand corner, which you're listening on YouTube, and it allows you to adjust the uh, quality and push it up to 720p. However, because um, right now, both YouTube and Facebook are being inundated with live streams. There's so many people doing this now um, as a as an aid to the uh, to the world but um they may be stepping it down just to deal with their own bandwidth uh, uh issues so there's not much i can do about that um i could actually just i could try restarting it um i could just uh, you know stop this and start and and restart it um because it has happened it has happened before let me uh, let me check and see how bad it looks myself here as we're as we're getting started. So we started as people are arriving. Um, glad to have you all here. I am just trying to um, trying to figure out. Um, uh, I'm looking at it. Here. Yeah, it wasn't. A, there have been times when it has been so blurry it's been almost uh, impossible to walk. Um, but uh, let's see. Let me check on YouTube. Go back to my uh, to my channel and uh, see what's happening. But I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, it's more blurry on YouTube than it is on um, on Facebook, and I think that's simply because of the sheer number of people that are um, that are watching. I've had it worse before, so let's just press on, right? Let's just uh, just not concern ourselves with it and 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 stick to the subject at hand that I know many of you are interested uh, in. Hello to Ava. Hello to John from Ireland. Hello Mary in uh, Niagara Falls. Uh, Parola, hi from Brazil. Hello Parola. Are you? No, I think I recognize you've been here before. It's blurry but not too bad, says uh, Kara. Daniel, as long as we can hear, it's cool. Hello. David and Elaine, hi, GP and all, love and blessings from the UK. Barbro, hey, Barbro, for, who's in Sweden right now. I think that's right. Isn't that right? Barbro, you're in Sweden. Barbro, you're in Sweden. Um, <clears throat> Kathleen, hi. Kathleen, Freddie, Anja, Anna Maria. <laughs> My uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, do like and share on whatever platform you happen to be watching. Uh, it does help draw uh, more people in. Although there are so many people that are uh, that are doing this uh, now, 
And I'm actually very happy to see that. Ross, hello to uh, Beatrice. Good to see you. Good better still great. Uh, Lasek, hi, everything's also from Poland. My Poland con Poland contingency is showing up in force. Oh, there's Jonathan. Uh, hi, hi, man. How are you? Uh, and Kaufman. Hi, Anne. Good to see you all here. Well, let's start like I l like to start. I've got some things I want to share, but as as always, I'm I'm doing this quite um, spontaneously. Uh, I didn't really plan anything. Uh, hello, Ursula and uh, Stephen. Hello, upstate New York. Good to have you with Stephen. Um, I haven't really planned anything. It's not like a presentation where I'm going to talk about metaphysical healing and that sort of stuff. I want to just be kind of a round table where, um, where we just kind of bring whatever's on our hearts and minds these days. And I know there's there's a lot. It's been it's been quite a disruptive time for uh, for everyone. Um, <clears throat> I know that there's uh, just an, a whole gamut of information pouring through, uh, uh, primarily Facebook and the you know and and Twitter and Snapchat and things like that. Not as much on YouTube because the YouTube the videos are produced and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> oh, Barb! Hi, Barb. Barb is there with you? Very good. Um, <clears throat> is there with uh, Mary? Um, so I, I try to be a, a a source of the the best purest information that I can from a spiritual perspective. Um, ob obviously, the the vast majority of the media is um, well. There's no nice way to put it. It's corrupt. It um, serves very special interests. Um, there's been a concerted effort, especially in the United States, to have an enormous amount of polarity and division among people. So the conversations on places like YouTube uh, or on um, uh, Facebook tend to be more contentious than helpful. Um, so I am certainly inviting everyone here to keep the conversation uh, positive to keep it um, genuine, um, to not kind of crowd the airways. I have had people kind of get on and put my uh, on my satsangs and the like and say a bunch of nasty things about this or that. I do block them. I just say, you're going to go away now. Um, <clears throat> so let's just remember why we're here. Um, we've gathered in this particular setting around uh, to discover what the spiritual approach to this current circumstance is, what the spiritual um, uh, solution might be, if there is one. I'm convinced there is, and I, I suspect many of you are as, as well. Um, but let's start by simply getting into our, our own hearts, getting deeply into our own selves, Getting deeply into that place where we're not dominated by the world around us, not completely uh, intimidated by the divisiveness and uh, the the conversation that's going out there, going on out there. Because the the genuine source of actual, truthful uh, information and knowledge always comes from within. Yes, there's useful tidbits that come from outside. The more you are um, oriented inward, <clears throat> the more you're connected with the truth of your own being, the more, the more easy it is to, uh, uh, to discern between what is just uh, ranting, what is downright uh, misleading and uh, disinformation, and what's genuinely true. And it allows us to find that inner balance, that inner posture, where we can do what we need to do on a practical level 
to deal with the circumstances we're in. And then beyond that, there's peace. There's contentment. There's a sense of confidence and, and even fearlessness. So, hi, Nazarin. Barbara is saying it's better on Facebook than it is on uh, YouTube, right? No, better here than Facebook. Sorry, the other way around. It's better on YouTube. And do remember on Facebook, oftentimes when the bandwidth is high, they will step down the resolution. But if you go down in the right-hand corner of the video, there's a little gear. Click on that, and you'll be able to set it to a higher resolution, which will give you a clearer picture. But as people have pointed out, um, it's most important that you uh, that you hear and feel than it is to see. There's really not much to look. Here's a 68-year-old man sitting in a in a rather empty room at, at this point. There's not much. There's not much here to see. There's not going to be any visual effects or special Hollywood effects here. Just uh, just us gathered around uh, our hearts. So um, Sue, hi Sue from uh, South Africa. Sandra Mills, love to catch you live. Great, Sandra, great to see you. I'm just said the video is getting better. James is very clear now. Good. So it's just it's just the the times, folks. If there a lot of people start doing live stream stuff, it you know it could uh, it, it it could get a little worse. It's fine. So a lot of emotion coming up, knowing a depth behind. Very good, Laura. This in Bristol, England. Good to be here. Um, <laughs> always calmer now from here loving presence um well let's go into that loving presence because you know it's not personal what a great what a great idea hi jeff great thank you for being here so i want you all to close your eyes and you'll notice that as you when you do that there is a, a very immediate natural tendency for our attention to focus inside. This is quite natural. Um, our minds are, and our attention is always seeking something to focus on. And sight is 80% of the information we get from the world comes from our sight. So just closing your eyes will automatically set attention seeking to focus something close, closer in. It needs to find something to focus on. Right? We just want to be very conscious as to what that focus is, because most of the time we're not. And of course, normally there's a million things that are drawing our attention outward. And at a time like this, it can even get more intense and actually focused on primarily one thing, all of our attention. So those of you who are just joining, we're just starting a, 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 some, a quiet meditation. We're just going to focus inward. So everybody, close your eyes if you haven't done so already. Start by taking a couple of nice deep breaths, very conscious breaths. There's nothing wrong with the fact that the attention wants to focus on something. We're just being very conscious, intentional beings by deciding where that focus is going to go. And we'll start just with breath. Intentionally slow the breath down. Really feel it going into your nose, into your lungs. Feel the diaphragm expanding. Pull it in as far as you can and just hold it for a few seconds and then let it, let it go. And do that again. I won't try to guide you on the timing because everybody's breath is a little bit different, but make it as deep and as, and as slow as you can. For the next bit of time, we're in no rush. There's no place to go. You're already here. Mm -hmm. 
And notice it, just doing that, your attention is satisfied. It's got something to focus on. And you might notice that the body begins to relax. Remember that your nervous system, and particularly the emotional system, is a totally reactive mechanism. Your nervous system is nothing but an organic computer that has simply been programmed to react in certain ways to certain circumstances. It's not sentient, it's not intelligent, it's completely programmatic. But you're not. And so as the attention is just on the breath for a moment, the body begins to quiet down because there's simply not anything for the emotions to react to. This is the power of simply focusing your attention inwardly for a minute. And it is a power. I'll talk more about that later. Now you can sink in even deeper. It's as if you're taking a step back and noticing that while you're instructing breath to slow down and your attention is there, that you can notice that there's something even more subtle that is aware of the breath. It's aware of the uh, attention. It's aware of the intention. It's very, it's very subtle. I don't even want to put a name on it. Notice that there's, there's an awareness here of the breath, an awareness that's even aware of directing the attention towards the breath. Now, I want you to simply let go of all of the ideas you have about what's happening right now. Not just in the world, but right here in this moment with your eyes closed. Our minds are perpetually active. And even though the, the eyes are closed, your mind is very likely still commenting on things. Well, this feels good. Or, gee, I wonder what happens next. Or, I wonder what this is going to do. Why don't you just say, thank you. I don't need you right now. And I just want you to notice that awareness that's aware even of those thoughts and how powerful it is to be able to disengage from those thoughts. There's nothing wrong with thoughts. Thinking is very useful. But right now we don't need it. Right now we're just being present. The same is true with the emotional system. As the thoughts get uh, disengaged from, they don't draw you into their narrative. There's an increasingly less amount for the nervous system to react to. And so the emotions begin to settle down. Now it is possible as, as this inward journey continues that emotional stuff can just come up that does not appear to be a, a mere reaction. Just notice it. Notice that you are noticing it. And then just let it come 
Let it be here and let it go. This is the yoga of allowing. And notice that it does come and go. Thoughts just come and go. The same is true of sensations. Right now you're feeling your body. Your eyes are closed. And so you're just feeling the body. And when you do that, oftentimes the mind will show you a picture. For instance, if there's a certain kind of, I don't know, maybe it's a, a tension or a pain or just some kind of an energy in like your knee that you're sensing kinesthetically, <clears throat> your, your mind could say knee, say the word knee, and even show you a picture of the knee. But that's not what you're experiencing. I want you to feel your knee or whatever it is, whatever part of the body may have drawn your attention. If there, right now I have just a little tiny ache in my shoulder. It just started a few moments ago. I'm just going to notice it. And like all sensation, notice that it is, it's not a static feeling. It's a flow. It's, there's always a shift to it. It's forever coming and going. And, and now as you withdraw even further, notice that sensations come and go, emotions come and go, thoughts come and go. But you don't. When a thought leaves, you don't leave with it. You're here. You watch it come, you watch it while it lasts, you watch it go. Now, what is that? What is that that is always seeing? It is the witness to everything that comes and goes. Now, when I ask that question, what is that? Your mind will probably want to answer. It may answer, well, I, I don't know, that's, that's consciousness or that's the brain. Or if you're non-dual, you may say, oh, that's pure awareness. You know, you may see, see that that's, well, that's Christ consciousness. Those are all, that's all the mind. Don't give it any dust. Your own presence. And notice that this presence, it is not the same feeling like the sensation. It, it's not the same kind of feeling as an emotion because it's not coming and going. It is very stable. It's definitely not a thought. So without giving it a name or a title or a form or anything, just become curious. Is what is this sense of presence? And now with your attention completely on that sense of presence, Notice how it's withdrawn from everything. You successfully made a complete 180 of your attention. Attention, which is normally focused on all sorts of things out there, has turned very gently, but very definitively towards its own source. origin of your attention, this presence. My, one of my favorite quotes from St. Francis of Assisi comes to mind here. He said, what you are looking for 
is where you are looking from. Now just paying attention to that sense, that feeling of your own presence. Is there anything missing here? Is there anything lacking? Is there any agitation? Does it have a color? Does it have a, a form or a weight? Is this something you're imagining? Or is this a real experience? Is this a visualization? Is this imaginary? Again, with just for, with the attention just on that very subtle sense of your own presence without a name or anything, can you find a boundary to it? Can you find a beginning to it? Can you find an end? What is this? Can you notice it fluctuating or changing the way thoughts and emotions and sensations do? Or is it utterly stable? Is it unhappy? Is it afraid? sense of the presence that you you are aware of is it different from you is it is there you and then this sense of presence Can you somehow separate yourself from it? If you can't, then this presence is you. The real you, not an imaginary you, not a thought you, not a set of emotions or sensations not a memory, not history, not a form, not a gender, not a belief system, not a race, not a creed, not a nationality. You, without any reference to anything other than you. So when you look to find a boundary, and you can't find one. You don't have a boundary. You don't have a beginning. You don't have an end. You have no fear. You are lacking nothing. This is your original state, 
your original innocence. This is the you that has been there the whole time. It was only obscured by the conditioning of the mind, the nervous system, and sensation. It was veiled, but never lost. We, are, we can, in belief, be led to conclude that we are this body, this form, this limited, suffering, scared being. But it is only an image in the mind. It is never true. Is, can you imagine a time when you would turn your attention inward like this and not find it? If this was not there, you would not exist. This is pure being. I say pure awareness, Buddha nature, Christ consciousness, the great I am. The religious name is God, the one being. The street name is me. So let your attention turn around again and look back out into the world. Feel it more connected to its source. Notice again your breathing and take another deep breath or two. And take your time in the next few moments to just breathe a bit, move your body and um, open your eyes. Welcome to everyone I hadn't said welcome to yet. Let's see, GJ has been following me for a few years, done some classes with you, wonderful. Vicky, hi Vicky, good to have you. Sally Atterton, hi Sally. Uh, Southeast England, great to see you in here. I'm already feeling calmer and more centered. Thank you, you're very welcome, you're very welcome. That feeling of being calmer and more centered, just like Mary said, oh, calmer now from your loving presence. It's not my loving presence, it's yours. All, all I'm doing is pointing you back to the very same place I go to. Because <laughs> when I turn within and I find that place, and you turn within and find that place, guess what? It's the same place. <laughs> There's not... There's not many of us. There's not many awarenesses. There's not many consciousnesses. There's only one. And we meet there in unity. That is the origin of oneness. The reality that the real being, the one presence, is one. Without a second. This one was still called Meditation on Oneness. I just realized the title is, is incorrect. Uh, let me see if I can change the, change the name. Yes, I can. Cool. <laughs> Bring the world. And the mind of the Where did I? Sure. That's there. See. Oops. Same on Facebook. That's very interesting. I don't know why I did that. Anyway, um, just want to make sure you're all here with me because there is, as I said, YouTube and Facebook are both having bandwidth problems. So if for some reason it locks up or the the image gets really blur, blur, blurry or for some reason it just freezes for a second, 
will come back. If it doesn't come back in a few moments, it'll come back. Because, um, you know, this is an unprecedented time in human history. <laughs> and that's that's not an under, that's not an overstatement. It, it actually is. The first time something like this has pretty much touched everyone in the world. You know, unless you're an Aboriginal tribe in the middle of the back of Australia or in the Amazon or, or something, everyone in the world is being affected by this. Every institution, every form, every being, every culture, every religion, and everyone is struggling to come to terms with it. Right? And this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us to really be spiritual. <laughs> right? Because spirituality isn't just another perspective to take right you know i hear fundamentalist christians trying to say well this is god, god punishing somebody right about something rather other people are, are trying to you know maintain the status quo others uh, blaming this blaming that everybody's trying to take a completely unusual event a completely extraordinary event and somehow try to understand it within the context but from before that event, which is a species of insanity. It's crazy. You can't. N nothing we know has, uh, has prepared us for this. So we have to go beyond. It's really very, very simple. We have to go beyond. Christ said it beautifully. He said, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. It'll break it, right? Or it'll smell terrible and taste horrible, right? We need to allow a moment like this to in, to pull us forward, right? to beckon us towards a deeper a deeper destiny. Daryl says, "I have been so unbothered by all the recent drama. I'm beginning to be concerned why I'm so unconcerned." <laughs> um, all it means is that you're in the state of equanimity. You know, when you're in that state of not being bothered by the drama and not really being touched by it, it's not indifference. Matter of fact, it's the most creative place to be. It is the place um, that is most capable of coming up with creative solutions that resolve it, protect people, uh, protect other everything, and, and even move us to a higher state than we were ever in before. So um, I welcome your lack of concern, right? It's not like you don't care. It's you, you don't mind. There's a state of equanimity. Excuse me. State of equanimity is a very powerful place. It, it really is the fruit of, of spiritual practice. You know, a spiritual practice gets freaked out the moment something changes. is isn't much of a practice. Right, <laughs> when everything goes, every, every, when everything goes crazy, you know, especially people who have been r religious and suddenly they're, you know, they're scared, to, they're scared to death. The religion wasn't very worth, worth very much, if it can't, if it can't withstand being blindsided by something like this. So Dave Scott says, Namaste, hi Dave, Anna, hello from Croatia, Croatia, great, Cheryl, hi Cheryl, Jay, how do you call in? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, I do have available, if you would like to actually be on the stream, oh no, that's not the one, and uh, talk to me, we can interact uh, via audio. I am going to put a copy. I will put it in the chat. Hopefully it will show up in both, um, in both Facebook and uh, YouTube, it should. If you click on that link, um, it will take you to a screen, uh, and, and you'll be able to. Um, uh, and it'll take you to a, a, another screen. I will see you here, and I will be able to bring you into the conversation, and we can actually, uh, we can actually talk. Um, so, um, that's the uh, that link I put there. Streamyard.com/slash a bunch of funny numbers. Uh, let me know if you can all see that. You should be able to just click on it in the chat uh, if you'd like to come on like that. That would be uh, that would be great. Um, 
Cheryl says, question, it's easy to know myself as presence, but how to know the world as self, self without object? Um, but wonderful. And, um, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm glad you asked that. That's one of the primary reason I wanted to do this uh, particular class. Um, and, but I'm going to just kind of got to go through here a little bit to let everything settle down. People are still uh, joining and the like. Um, Patricia Zahentmeyer, hey, hey Patricia, good to see you. Could not find a time when I was not, said Mary Sykes. Good, because there wasn't a time when you weren't. She also said, G GP, I remember as a young child trying to see if I could remember how it was before I was born, before I understood that there was never a time that I was not. So as I tried to feel what it would be like to be non-existent, and I, I remembered that I could not find a time I was not. Right. Yes. I, you know, I think a lot of people had that when I was very, very young as well. I had a similar thing. I'm trying to imagine not existing. <laughs> and I couldn't do it. Right. I, I just could not, I could not fathom. Okay. okay not, oh, that's being, oh no, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here aware of not existing, which means non-existence is not possible. Existence is all there is. Beingness is all there is. John David says, turning us back to where we all are, where we all are. John Sheehan, seven, seven billion humans, one being. Thanks, I had the same feeling, said Barbara. And to Daryl, yes, it's amazing when we're sending love and light to the world, we are sending it to ourselves because, because they're one, one and the same. Hi, GP. It's a blessing to feel that truth of being, says Rosario. Taken forward once again. Thank you for your love and your help. You're welcome. Same here, GP. Mike Mikhail. Hi, Mikhail. Uh, in Finland. Good to, good to have you. Um, let me go back to Cheryl's question because it really is kind of the main thrust today. It's easy to know myself as presence, but how to know the world as self, a self without object? Well, at a time like this, we have a choice. We can either see the world as other, as enemy, as get away, or we can take it into our hearts. There's uh, Shankara, who is kind of the uh, regard, a luminary, if not kind of the originator of the whole non-dual Advaita Vedanta uh, path in India. Um, made the most beautiful statement. He was talking to a bunch of, of Brahmins, and Brahmins in India are the, are the, high, the high class. They are the, the priesthood, you know. Um, and, and it was a, a common theme in the, in the Hindu religion that the world is an illusion and that Brahma is all there is. That, that Brahma is the one being. That's their word, Brahma, Brahman, sometimes Brahman, you'll hear it pronounced, um, is the one being. Just as I mentioned during our meditation that, that that sense of presence you're feeling is exactly the same sense of presence I'm feeling. There is no difference, right? And you can feel that, can't you? You can tell by the, by the character of the, of, the, of the presence itself that we are all experiencing exactly the same thing. It couldn't be any other way. It's self-evident, right? But here's, here's what Shankara threw into the mix that kind of baffled the Brahmins he was talking to. He said, the world is an illusion. They all agreed. Only Brahman is real. They all agreed. And then the kicker, Brahman is the world. The world seen as an objective, separate thing from myself is an illusion. The world seen as myself is the truth. The universe is your body. It is the body of that presence. It is the body of God. Now, admittedly, this is not something we get 
right off, right from the get go. There's, there's some inner inquiry that has to take place, some opening inside that recognizes that the sum total of my experience happens within my own consciousness. Experience, what we call experience, is what? Sensation, emotion, and thoughts. Those three colors form every other variation of your experience, do they not? Is there any experience you have that you cannot boil down to some combination of thought, feeling, and sensation? That's all there is or experience. The notion that your experience of thought, feeling, and sensation is the result of an external world out there somewhere acting on you is a completely unprovable. I know sensation. The only knowledge. Seem to be back. I lost a couple of people in queue here to talk. So, um, right, I appear to um, give me a little chat, see if I'm still here for you. And uh, restored. As I said, this is the way it's going to be. Well, you know. In and out, in and out. Um, if you are in queue, please turn off your video. Uh, Post on it before we uh, um, oops, did ah, here we go. Audio video frozen, restart frozen. Can you all still hear and see me? Um, <clears throat> I guess not frozen, frozen, for everything is frozen. YT doesn't work. Kathleen says, I'm back on Facebook. Um, audio is frozen. Back on Facebook, gone on YouTube. Okay. I'm going to just have to end it and re. Oh, now, it, now it's good. Well, it's good on Facebook. How about YouTube? Nothing on YouTube. I can, I can actually check YouTube from here, so I should. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that is. Okay. Yes, it's.
just uh, just my concern there is to kind of and and stick to the subject at hand. But if you're I mean, also from Poland. Okay, I'm doing my best. No, it's okay. It's okay on um, on on YouTube as well. Excellent. Oh, okay. <laughs> back on YouTube. I'm back on Facebook. You are working here. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, as I mentioned, those of you who, yeah, some people have, have been completely lost. As I mentioned earlier, um, uh, both Facebook and YouTube announced and all the various services that because everybody's at home um, and everybody wants to contribute. Uh, there's just an, an, an enormous amount of live streaming going on. There's an enormous amount of internet traffic going on, right? Uh, systems are saturated. And so it is very possible that at times during this, um, during this, uh, uh, this live stream that I'm doing here right now, that this could happen. Um, I'm pretty convinced that if uh, we just hang out for a while, it'll it'll pop back up. If it doesn't, you know, if it's a few minutes, I will basically just <clears throat> stop the broadcast and restart. But that means you'll have to refresh your browsers and the like um, <clears throat> to uh, to you know to pick up the newest one because the old one will be the old one. It doesn't reconnect to the old. Um, the live stream it makes a new one so uh, it, so where was i before i was um can you turn off video on facebook actually i can't no i unfortunately i cannot do that um in and out on facebook can you turn off video no unfortunately i i can't control that i can't turn this into an audio only uh only feed uh, which would be another way. It'd be great to do it. Um, so we just have to uh, we just have to bear with it while we can. I will be. This is all being recorded. I will be making a uh, a replay of this available for everyone, and I also make it available as a as an audio download. Uh, too bad I lost about twenty people. I had to kind of dropped off. Maybe they'll be back. Um, so, anyways, I was as I was talking. Um, the sense of the world being yourself, it seems like a very lofty, very, very uh, ephemeral uh, kind of thing. And I don't want to make it into, into such a, an obscure or arcane spiritual idea. You know, this, the, it's much more practical than that. As I was saying before we got cut off, um, it is, The sum total of our experience is simply our emotions, our sensations, and our thoughts. When we believe that our thoughts actually, that our thoughts are actually the truth, that they are actually accurately representing reality, we have locked ourselves in an illusion. It is impossible for thought to capture the infinite. And notice when we did our meditation and we withdrew from thought, the, the inner experience was one of spaciousness, wasn't it? It got bigger. The, your inner experience broadened. Why? because it was no longer being bounded by thinking. Being is not bounded ever. Thought is always bounded. That's why in order to experience um, self-awareness, self-realization, we must step back from thought. We must disengage from thinking. We must, thinking is there, it's part of life, as is emotion and sensation. It's not a problem 
unless you believe that the thoughts are actually accurate rather than just a story, a representation, an, an image. The thought about yourself is no more real than a picture of you in a photo album. It's a representation of you and not the reality of you. What is the reality of you? Well, you experienced it early, earlier when we did the meditation. That simple, unbounded sense of presence. It's an amazing thing because we're so used to thinking of ourselves in terms of being someone, a form, a character, a person, a, a, a body, a gender, or beliefs. We're not used to this idea of knowing ourselves as boundless and formless. Now, without form, the formless has no vehicle of expression. You know, music without, without musicians, right? You know, a song without a singer, while yes, it's there, it's real, it's possible, remains completely unknown. So what we experience as the world is in fact the expansive, infinite, boundless reality manifesting its own character and nature in form. And the character and nature that it manifests in form is love. That's the real essence of it. That is the world. That's what Shankara meant when he said, Brahma is the world. When it's seen through those eyes, when it's seen through the eyes of thought, world, dangerous problems, viruses, evil people, bad systems, right? You're stuck in Maya. You're in, you're in samsara. Right? And all of that, all of that is in your own mind. This, that's a mind blower. So none of it's out there. None of it's out there. What is out there? Nothing. Why are we all having the same experience? Because we are all the same being. There's not your consciousness and then and Daryl's consciousness and David and Elaine's consciousness and Anna's consciousness. It's one consciousness that is having this unified experience. To know that takes the fear out of interaction with what's happening in the world. If it's happening objectively, independently of me, and my perception of it has nothing to do with it, I am 100% its victim. There's no way out. But if it's not like that, if it is a mind virus that happens to be infecting everybody's mind at the same time, then it's simply mass hypnosis. That's the way you could look at it. And what's the remedy for a mass hypnosis? Wake up. Wake up to what's real. Now, when I say things like this, please, I'm not an extremist. That doesn't mean you should just go running around hugging people, that we shouldn't take the precautions that we need to, to take right now. But don't let the mind virus infect you. Now, what I'm telling you is actually very solid. It's practiced by yogis. This is actually the foundation of Ho'oponopono, of much of the new thought uh, uh, churches, A Course in Miracles, that takes this point of view that I'm saying. So it's not completely, uh, it's completely out outlandish. The entire condition of the world can be met right here within your own mind. You can heal the world in the mind of the healer. And of course, that's where it has to start, right? My fearlessness projects a very different picture onto the world. The, you know, it's, it, it's interesting that the physical virus, the little 
critter, the, 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 the coronavirus, invisible to our sight. We can't see it. Somehow this invisible, unknowable thing affects us. The, a mind virus works the same way. Think of a mind virus as a, as a meme, you know, that's become a juvenile delinquent, <laughs> right? It gets in unseen. We, it, it gets in because underneath we all have this idea that somehow I am an independent being in an antagonistic world. I am vulnerable. I am powerless. Right? Now, this is all under the surface because nobody wants to think about that all the time. But this is, in fact, the, the construct of most of the unconscious of us. And then something like this happens. And that underlying assumption of me as, the, as a vulnerable object in the world, rather than as the invulnerable uh, infinite in which the world appears, that becomes a Velcro that something like this can stick to. And then I become afraid of something I can't even see. Now, again, I am not being flippant about this. Don't just go off doing whatever you feel like, feel like doing. Take the precautions and then forget about it. Let yourself become completely absorbed in this period of time where life is saying, hitting the pause button, inviting us to, to turn our attention back inside and to let go of all of our childish desires to go back to the way it was. There's no evolution, there's no growth, there's no progress, there's no, there's no development of consciousness in going back the way it was. The, the way it was didn't work. And, and frankly, this is not the last one of these we're going to be encountering. It will take a lot to shake humanity out of its indolence. To, to shake it so it, it stops listening to its leaders who do not have its interest in heart, at heart. Start being seduced by a carrot while somebody's stealing your, your entire life savings. Um, we don't want to go back to that. As I've been, uh, and I've been self-employed, I've been doing this for a very, a very long time. So um, other than the fact I can't go to, out to eat as much, this hasn't had that much of an impact on me. So I have to, I have to own up to that. For many other people, this has been a huge impact. You know, a lot of people, their social life centers around work um, and not even having a social life. You know, I'm, I'm a rather reclusive fellow. I, I live very solid, solid, solitary. So I don't have a lot of, of, um, of, of, of social interaction. So I, I know for some, this is really quite a strain. But the fact is, over decades, I have cultivated this, this love of, of being with my own being. And in that opening meditation, that's all I did, is I brought you into direct... Un, uh, undistracted um, connection with your own being. And what did it feel like? It feels divine. It feels wonderful. Ah, David Lane saying, coping with technology is also a great opportunity to come back to presence. Oh, you absolutely must. Admire your patience and perseverance, GP. Well, thank you. Hi, Beth. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Um, I'm going to see if I can bring Jay on line here. And then, um, Jay, um, sorry that took so long. Can you hear me and can we hear you? Um, yeah, I could hear you. Can, you. can you hear me? You can hear me. Can anybody else hear him? I can't hear him. Where am I? Why is it coming? Hold on a second. Let me check something. I think the audio, when that thing blacked out, that the audio, ah, indeed it did. Hold on. 
Okay, now I can hear you. Yeah, I'm using my uh, cell phone, so I wasn't sure if you could hear me or not. No, it, it wasn't you. When when it blanked out, um, <clears throat> when it blanked out, the uh, it switched devices on me over here. So it was actually coming out a set of headphones on the other side of the room. But I'm good. All right, what is on your mind, my friend? Um. So last night, um, I was listening to your latest um, meditation uh, video. Mm -hmm. And um, I had yeah. this experience a couple of days ago this week, too, where like, like I, I sincerely was paying attention to like I, pay, you know, I turned the attention on to myself instead of um, paying attention to um you know, the thoughts that were passing by. And mm -hmm. um, the first time I had this experience, I was listening to Eckhart Tolle and um, like halfway through the video, like all of a sudden, nothing was bothering me. Like thoughts were coming and going. It, it was just this peace came all over me. Like it, I totally embraced it. It was, I was just laying there not bothered by anything. Um, now, I'm not sure if this wow. was, you know, like the enlightenment experience or or I was just having an experience. I'm not sure. Well, don't try to don't try to label it like like that. Y y yes, it is what you could call an an awakening or an enlightenment experience. You were simply experiencing yourself as you actually are you had you were experiencing yourself as the presence that was not being bantered around by the coming and going of of, of thoughts and feelings um the the need is simply to deepen it is to is to let that go deeper the question i would ask you then as um, which Eckhart does sometimes and not always, is, okay, who are you then? Right? So now you, you've had you're the experience of being and you're not being troubled by the thoughts, by the feelings, by the sensations. They're just coming and going and there's this peace, right? Right now. So who, who are you? Um, Who is this you that is aware of the thoughts, the feelings, and the sensations? You see, if you're still thinking, I had this experience, I was peaceful, and that I you're referring to is the person, at some point that peace is going to slip away and you're going to feel like you lost it. Yeah. Well, I never, I never felt like I lost it. It's still here. I, I'm still... I'm still that it my the, the thought that comes in is am I am I am I just pushing my thoughts away my feelings away because um, I, I do I do feel this in the background even though there are overwhelming thoughts anxiety I, I could still I could still feel this presence am I am I just pushing everything away at that point hardly hardly <laughs> If you're pushing them away, they get more intense because they feed on your resistance. If you're becoming more peaceful, uh, more equanimous, um, then no, you're not pushing them away. You are disidentifying with them, and it's a big difference. This isn't suppression or repression. It's not reframing. It's not a psychological technique. It is, it is simply what happens when you are no longer being uh, drawn into the narrative of thought. In other words, you're not being invited to go back to sleep. Right? That's what thought does. It wants to draw you into its narrative. And if it does, you become the main character in mind's story. But if you don't, the main character isn't in the story, which means you don't have a story. So what I, what I would urge you to do is to just... When you're in that space, right, consciously there, 
where you're watching it go when you say that it's there it's there uh, all the time even when it gets intense this is the time this is the place in which you pose that inner question who am i who is it that's actually aware of the thoughts the feelings the sensations notice that even the sense of peace is being observed by something even more subtle Anything you can observe is phenomenal, whether it be wonderful and blissful or be grievous and, and, and intense. Even that sense of peace is being perceived by something even more subtle than the peace. Yes, that's, yeah, the that's, place. that's very true. But, um, I, I, yeah, yeah. It, I, I could still, yeah, I could still sense that peace I can still observe it, um, and 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 at that point, um, like there, I can't describe it. It's it's just something that's observing everything, even, I mean, it, positive or negative. There's just something observing. Yeah. I can't really, I can't really describe what you it is. Cannot. Perfect. Perfect. No, you can't say what it is because it's unknowable. You can't know it. You can only be it. You cannot perceive yourself. A finger can't touch itself. A knife can't cut itself. Reality cannot know itself as one thing knows another objectively. So anything you perceive is not you, however subtle it might be. And at this juncture, you simply let go of trying to know. And what happens is knowing and being converge. Knowing is being, and being is knowing. That's sat chit ananda, being consciousness and bliss. You cannot know yourself as one thing knows another. But yet, do you not know that you are? Yeah. That's not that's not a subject object knowing, is it? No. That's the absolute. You can't go any further than that. Now you just marinate there and it will take over every aspect of your life. It's not even an it, it's you. That is you. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I just don't want my mind to take turn that into a goal uh, that's what you're yeah exactly yeah. now notice something is aware of the mind saying i want to turn it into a goal it's also aware of another part of the mind saying i don't want to turn that into a goal that's more just more activity in the in the in the in the mind can the self turn this into an activity or a goal or is that just another phenomena that the self is aware of yeah. Um, Notice that it's trying to draw you into being an I that can mess up, mess things up. Yeah. It's trying to pull you back into the seeker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's very tricky. I, I I have to be really careful it's, not to believe believe it. It's so very subtle, but it gets to be really really fun. <laughs> <sighs> It's like, oh, there it is again. This is the constant invitation to pull you back into personhood. To pull attention and consciousness back into an identification with some kind of a form, any kind of form. Even a highly developed, very spiritually aware form. If you can perceive it, it's not you. Period. You do not know yourself objectively or phenomenally. Muji refers to it as non-phenomenal recognition. You know yourself because you are yourself. It is not one thing knowing something else. It is knowing and being as one non-dual reality. That's you. So now you just become increasingly adept 
at catching the mind as it attempts to start to re-identify. And, the, and, and this, this could go on for a while. And, and um, so what, during, um, well, how do I say it? Um, like when I'm not meditating, when I'm, inter, you know, when I'm interacting with the world, with people, um, sometimes, I mean, pretty much all the time, the mind steps in and I just get lost in whatever, you know, whatever emotion I'm feeling at the time. And then I realize, Oh, I got lost in it. Um, is that something that's going to keep on going until I stop believing in or giving energy to those emotions? Um, it, it'll last as long as it lasts. Um, you know, you've arrived at it, it's, it's a good thing. This is how you flex your muscle. This is how you mature, right? The mind, the dealing, the mind is actually helping you become clearer and clearer and clearer. You know, you find yourself kind of, it's almost like being hypnotized and suddenly you're identified with the person and these emotions and you're wanting these emotions to go away. You may be beating yourself up. Oh my God, I lost it. I'm, you know, um, or uh, uh, what happened to the, oh, I'm supposed to be more spiritual. Just notice that entire dialogue, that entire scene is happening in front of you. Where are you? Whenever anything comes up, where are you? You're never in it. You're always the observer of it. But the thought will come up that says, I am in this. Remember, the, the devil speaks in first person. <laughs> that voice in your head isn't engaging you like you're somebody else. It says, I. It doesn't say, hey, man, what's up? It goes, I've gotten sucked in. I'm having a problem. I'm struggling. But that I that it's referring to isn't you. That I is the character in the made-up story. The I it's referring to does not exist any more than the character in a story exists. It's interesting. Could be a nice story. Could be a great story, you know, like Star Wars or something, right? <laughs> well, it was until Disney bought it. <laughs> now it sucks, but that's another. <laughs> Yeah, there. Yeah, there. Yeah, there isn't really any problem. There, um, it's yeah, there really is. Yes, any as a as a maturing practice, you you described it accurately. I'm just trying to speed the process up for you. Uh, it, it's not something that you have to practice, right? Yeah. Mar just continue to marinate, recognizing that this is always where you are. This is not a position you get away from and then have to go back to. The, the one who gets away from that position and has to come back is the illusion. That one doesn't exist. And that's the crux, to, the crux of it. We're not somebody overcoming false thoughts. We are, we are overcoming the belief in a somebody that has false thoughts. Yeah. That person doesn't exist. It is a completely a fabrication of the mind. It has no more reality to it than Mickey Mouse. So, um, what? So, like, it feels like I'm putting in effort, but then at the same time, it, it it's it's really not effort. It's just. I'm more aware of it, it I guess. Feel, it could feel like effort. Yeah, it could feel like effort. Don't say, oh, I can't effort, I can't effort. That's the mind too. Yeah, it, it, there's a tension. You know, there's a, you know, there's a, a habit energy of always going towards uh, being drawn into the, the conversation of the mind. And so at first it may seem as if it requires effort to bring our attention back. Um, but after a while you realize that even that was being orchestrated by the self. And, and it was never effort. There was never any effort on your part. It too was just happening. Huh. Uh, reality. Um, 
lost in that sauce. You can't be lost in that sauce. You're looking at it. Yeah. You still hearing me? Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, you broke up um, probably like a minute yeah. or... Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Good. Um, so it, it's very, very subtle, right? Yeah, but it, 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 at this stage, it's going to be trying to draw you back in to the story of the seeker. And you're not a seeker. You're what is being sought. The seeker is just part of the movie. It's a good movie, and it's an important one. But um, that's not who you are. And just stay with it. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, You're doing great. You can't yeah, lose. Yeah, you can't was, lose um, at this I, game. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can see like what what my mind's trying to do like last night after this experience i like immediately i wanted to check out um nisargadat maharaj and uh, ramana maharshi you know like how they live their life after this awakening i was like no no wait wait your life the times that they lived in and the way the time right now it's it's totally different you can't it was just something yeah. that my, my mind was trying to um, see comfort in, I guess. Of course, and we all know the we, we all know the uh, the fantastic stories, the Ramana Maharshi stories. But you've probably never heard of Susan Siegel or or Stephen jo Jordan. Um, literally thousands of stories of people just ordinary lives. That you know, they just lived their lives. They didn't become a, a, a luminary like a Ramana Maharshi, and yet they were still quite awake, right? Um, your 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 human life becomes the manifestation of the awakeness, and everyone will be different. You may be on a stage at some point with ten thousand people listening to you. You may be sitting in a forest somewhere with one person. Bodhidharma is one of the most famous Zen masters of all time. He had one student. <laughs> he reluctantly took him. <laughs> As the story goes, the, his student had to, in order to get him to take him as a student, he cut off his arm and sat out in the snow all night to prove he was worthy of it <laughs> so please don't do that but but yeah i, I mean these are your your unique experience of this is going to be different than anybody else's and and it's going to be showing forth into the world an aspect of awakening that only you can show and it will touch people your job is to first, as Papaji would say, okay, now be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just marinate in it. Let this deepen. Let yourself become wiser, more subtle and nuanced until there's just no place left for the false self to be. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, my friend. What a great report. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to put you back where you were before. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Thank very you much. Jay. Yeah, yeah. Have a good. Um, and sorry, but uh, when that whole thing happened, you got kind of all muddled and I had to disconnect you. So if you want to talk, uh, reconnect. And there was somebody else too. I can't remember who it was now. Uh, there was somebody else in the queue to talk. Let me put the, um, hold on a second. There is the, um, I'm just posted in the chat a, a link um, that will allow you to, if you want to have a conversation like I just did with, with Jay. Um, you don't have to show your video, um, you know, so you don't have to uh, worry about that. Some people get very shy about being on camera, but you can turn off your video. I won't be showing your video. 
when you come online. Maybe there for a second, and I will just make it so it's voice uh, only if you want to to do that. Let's scroll back because I think I I think I missed a couple of things here. David and Lane said we notice thoughts, feelings, and emotions rising up, especially at times like these. But these are seen much sooner now, and as a result, are not attached to. As a result, they tend to dissolve within the light of consciousness, like the early morning mist dissolving in the sun. This is such an important thing to grasp. Our thoughts, emotions, and even sens sensations are sub sustained by our attention to them and our belief in them. So when I think, and, and it can be negative or positive. I can be very attached to, the, to a particular thought or a belief or something, or I can be really averse to it. Oh, please, go away. Terrible reason. I, please, go away. I, don't, I can't stand it. Both of those feed it because it feeds on the energy of attention. Now, if you're, wa if you're watching TV and a show comes on that is, so ter is just terribly boring, do you have any problem whatsoever taking your attention away from it? You know, if you've gone to a movie and go, oh my God, and walked out earlier, early because it was just such a waste of time, um, was that hard? <laughs> right? The, the, the trend of thoughts and feelings and the like they have to hook you in some way. They have to engage you. There's either something you're going to get from it or it makes you afraid of it. You're either trying to grab it or push it away, right? In either case, you're hooked. That's the Velcro. If you remember that the main character in the story that thought is presenting to you is not you even though it speaks in first person, you can become increasingly disinterested in it. Now, some things pop up and they demand our attention. I'm not talking about everyday stuff that you have to do, taking care of family and, and, and the like. Um, I'm talking about the kind of ongoing narrative that is in most of our minds. How often does it draw you in? Right? And you'll find that every place where it draws you in, that there's a sense of identity, there's a sense of identification. Right? And that's the hook. Right? Ah, it's, it's inviting me to identify with the main character of a story, and the story's really boring. You remove the attention from it. So, you know, you, you'll hear me and other spiritual teachers talk about this practice of removing your, your attention, but you can't remove your attention to some, from something you're interested in. You, you just can't do it, right? But if you don't have interest, you, it doesn't get your attention in the first place. The, the mind, the, the habit pattern of thought, of the person, will always hold out some kind of carrot. You have to hold out a carrot or it'll threaten you with something. Or you better pay attention or oh, things are going to get really terrible, right? Or you can't spend this time meditating. What's going to happen to your business? You're, you're going to lose all your money, right? It's, there's always something in there aiming at you to get you to re-identify with the main character in this story the main character in this story is a fiction. You are not Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse, right? You are none of those things. You are always in the position of the enlightened witness. You are always the one watching. Now, now just take a moment and verify that for yourself. Are you not always in the position of the one witnessing what's happening? The only thing that happens is that we become identified with the content of what we are witnessing and we forget that we're the witness. We are so absorbed with what's on the screen, we forget that we're actually sitting in the audience. 
it's like one of those total immersion 3d 360 kind of kind of uh, kind of things where it feels like you're right in the middle of it i don't know if they still have it but you know a long long time ago it took my kids a long long time ago took my kids to uh to disneyland and they had this uh had this one ride attraction that was uh 12 screens they had this car that they shot it on and on top of it was a was uh 12 cameras that were that were uh, filming so they could do a 360 thing i think it's a bit like the google car um anyway they would run these films and they had race tracks and space and all sorts of stuff sorts of stuff and you stood in it, it was like a movie theater the screens were uh, up above they started probably about five feet and went up to about 12 feet so it was big screens all the way around you they had railings there and you won't just say well what the heck do you need a railing for but when it started the immersion was so total people weren't grabbing on because senses were fooled you got so dragged into the story that the reality that you were just standing there and didn't need to do a thing didn't need to hold on to anything was lost you got completely absorbed into it. this is how it works the story so absorbs you you think that story's about you <clears throat> and it isn't it is about an imaginary character let's see you got some what's coming down here jay says thank you jay, uh, very much g my wife was trying to Call me so the audio kind of cut off. Well, say hello to your wife for me. It's crazy how the mind works. It makes it look like I need to pay attention to the thought that's happening now. But that itself is another thought. You got it. So when I don't believe that thought immediately, there's just me aware. Yes. And when you're just that aware, you are the awareness. It's not me being aware. Okay. There's not two. There's not a me that has awareness. Awareness is not an attribute of you. Awareness is you. Even the thought of me being aware is just a thought. There is only awareness. Awareness is who you are. Uh, Dale, I didn't say hello to you. Or Petra, I didn't say hello to you. Hi, Anna. Give me a laugh. <laughs> I can't remember what the laugh was about now. Um, uh, let's see, Freddie, the personality doesn't exist. Dale says, I think it's really, really helps to think of thoughts and emotions as the sixth and seventh senses. Yes, very much so. Just like other five senses, thoughts and emotions can help you model and react to the world just like eyesight or hearing can. If you view it that way, it's easier to not identify with thoughts and emotions. Yeah, that's very true. We don't identify with sight identify with what we see which is of course perception and thought and the like it's just that the thoughts can become so complex we start to treat what they're modeling as a real entity yes that's exactly the case yeah that's exactly the case we believe that the model is the reality and of course the model like every model can get very removed from reality it can actually create a completely different world that is not a model of anything it's a total fabrication much of our political and economic systems are that they are total fabrications they have no connection anymore to even a point of reference of nature or or a value system that works for humanity they've become self-contained insanities I mean, that is insanity. The further you, away you get from some kind of a reference point, the further away the model gets from something concrete, um, the more abstract it becomes, the more insane it becomes. You, because there's nothing containing it anymore. It, it just makes stuff up. And we can see that in our world right now. That's, that's what's happening, especially, this, especially here. We have many people in our government who are... Uh, who are quite nuts they there's no connection they just invent reality they have no connection to reality whatsoever how in the world they get in positions of power anyway david elaine says wonderful reply gp so beautifully explained thank you yes you're very welcome yeah that's what i mean hard to hard to describe yes yeah jay i've been 
I've been working on describing this stuff for decades. So don't worry if you're a little short of words. You'll, it, 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 the words will come. But for right now, just be quiet. Just marinate in it. Let this become who you are. There's just awareness. And little by little, the need to have a sense of being some someone will fall away and just the spaciousness of being no one becomes quite, quite, quite pleasurable, <laughs> quite delightful, actually. Well, anyway, let me put it all back because there aren't any fresh questions in the queue and nobody else has clicked on the link to speak. Um, let's pick, pull it back a little bit because uh, it is deeply significant when we recognize that what the world is experiencing is simply a, a neutered illusion. We're afraid of things that don't actually exist. Now, here's a radical statement. And again, I'm not a doctor, so don't, nobody shoot me. <laughs> right? Viruses don't exist. They are completely constructs of the mind. And it is our fear of them that creates the effect, not the thing itself. Nothing exists outside of our perception. There is not a little microbe out there trying to get you. That is a belief, an illusion contained completely within the mind. And as I said before, this is, I probably take it more deeply than most do, but this is uh, other than Ho'oponopono, which takes that very approach just, just like that and deals with nothing outside of the consciousness of the individual who is the practicing, practicing Ho'oponopono. Um, it's a little bit, a little more uh, diluted, I think, in some of the new thought uh, religions, uh, A Course in Miracles, although A Course in Miracles says this as well. So this is not like it's completely out there uh, for folks. But at a time like this, um, the rubber has to meet the road. You know, it's nice when everything's nice and you can say, oh, yeah, it's all in the mind. Isn't that great and wonderful? But when so there's something actually appearing to threaten you, to let that insight actually deepen, to go, what, is it really? Do I really feel that? Or is that just kind of a philosophy I adopted because it was kind of a cute spiritual idea? This is the beauty of life, right? <laughs> just when you think you got it, that's when the, you know, the cosmic kick in the ass comes, right? And we just got a nice cosmic kick in the ass as we're all sitting around <laughs> at home now, uh, uh, right? Uh, having to deal having to deal with the emotions about the event, having to deal with the fear that's going through many people's minds that can, that can also appear, appear in our, our, our own, having to, having to deal with uh, uh, the, the world and government organizations that are just terribly unprepared to deal with it, and have just not been paying attention. We've been kind of caught with our pants down. Um, and on top of that, not having access to all the things that we normally distract ourselves with. I mean, the only thing we got left is social media to distract ourselves with. We can't shop. <laughs> well, we can still do Amazon. We can't go to the store. You can't go to the, you can't go, you know, shopping for, for, for shoes and things. You can't go out to eat. You can't go to bars. Um, can't go to entertainment. Can't go to sports events. Right? A lot of the stuff that, um, that kept us from having to actually confront how we really feel and think have been taken away. What a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to, to truly challenge that. It is. So when I say something like that, that the coronavirus does not exist, it is nothing but a mind virus. Um, I'm inviting you to explore this for yourself, to not accept it on face value because I said it or anybody else does. And in fact, I was talking in much different terms. I was interviewed on a radio show this morning um, with somebody who is a, 
a holistic uh, pharmacist. He's a pharmacist, but he's just totally into natural remedies and that sort of thing. And we couldn't go quite this far to just completely dismissing the entire thing as a mental virus that, that is empowered because everybody believes in it. Right? And that force of belief, that shared force of belief, makes it a force within the, the entirety of human consciousness. And human consciousness is not splintered. There is not your consciousness there and mine here. It is one consciousness. Some thoughts appear uh, in, in some pattern, and that pattern of thoughts we call myself. But the one calling that myself is actually the same self in absolutely every one of us. And that's why it can seem to be... Uh, everywhere. There's one broadcasting station and, and, and a bunch of mindless receivers. You could, you could look at it that way. Um, it's not perfect metaphor, but, it, but it's not bad. So the invitation is to explore this for yourself. What evidence do I have of the existence of anything outside of my perception of it? This is something to actually look at. Now to help you with that, um, 2,600 years ago, <laughs> there's a very, uh, a very significant fellow was wa walking the planet, the Buddha, he became known as, um, who to me was without a doubt the greatest teacher that's ever lived, certainly within any history we know of. And in one of his more obscure, less known sutras called the Lankavatara Sutra, he outlined four bodhisattva practices that I'd like to share with you. Now, the bodhisattva is the hero, the highest attainment in Buddhism. The, the bodhisattva is the one who vows to save all beings from suffering the, and is the hero of the Mahayana, the greater vehicle. The, the Theravada Buddhism, as, as opposed to uh, Zen Buddhism, the Theravada uh, Buddhism, the hero is the Arahat, where you simply transcend and go into Nirvana. The Bodhisattva, you, you seek enlightenment for yourself to the Arahat. The Bodhisattva, you seek enlightenment for the benefit of all beings very different, right? Go up the mountain for yourself, you come down the mountain for others. Uh, Buddha said he spent 500 lifetimes as a bodhisattva before becoming a Buddha. Um, it, it is the place where you're even willing to postpone your own ultimate freedom to serve those who are suffering. And yet that suffering has to be met not out there, but in here, in your own heart. The Bodhisattva vows, these are coming right from, excuse me, the practices. Of those who are on this kind of a spiritual path from the Buddha. The first one was, was first becoming adept at, perceive, at, at dis discerning the perceptions of your own mind. Now ponder that for a moment. Becoming adept at perceiving, at discerning the perceptions of our own minds. We often, most of the time, and most people never even question it, we take in the various ideas and assumptions and conclusions and beliefs. We then experience them as our experience because because our perceptions have been completely distorted and colored by them and not recognize that what we're looking at is a perception of our own mind and not reality. So the very first practice to anyone who aspires to the highest <laughs> place you can have and still be a human being is to become adept at distinguishing what is my perception and what's real. This is a deep calling. Right? This is not for the faint of heart. Is we like our person. We like, oh yeah, this is because oh, because that's what's true. N no need to question that, right? 
to actually have to question your own perceptions is is, is a truly uh, high high calling. And of course, remember his the function of the bodhisattva is the alleviation of suffering, becoming adept at discerning the perceptions of our own minds because the lack of that discernment is what creates suffering. In other words, we create our own suffering from a lack of discernment, from a lack of seeing things as they actually are and being seduced by our perceptions of them. The second one is a bit of a mind blower. It says, perceiving the non-existence of external existence. Now chew on that for a second. This is coming from the Buddha, okay? So there's a lot of credibility behind it. This is not coming from A Course in Miracles or some, uh, some New Age teachers, not even coming from me. Okay. The, the one I regard as the greatest teacher of all time said, it's your second practice, perceive the non-existence of external existence. No, nothing out there. Consciousness does not end at the skin. That is an illusion. That is one of the that is one of the perceptions that you have to discern isn't real. If you just stop for a second, a little bit, we'll do a, a meditation along those along those lines to see if that boundary line between you and other, between you and this objective world out there somewhere, is real. Do I actually end at this skin? The third one was avoiding views, rising, duration, and cessation. That arising, things arise, things endure, things go away, um, is, the, is the foundation of our whole idea of time, of karma, of multiple lives. Um, in Buddhist teachings, it became the 12 chains 12 links in the chain of causation that was the cause of suffering, starting with ignorance, ending with old age and death, right? But this was the inevitable path of it. And in this bodhisattva practice, he completely destroys time. Nothing arises, nothing endures, nothing subsides. The existence of everything is ephemeral. If there's no world, if it's just a perception, if it's just a thought in the mind, then no thing actually arises, no thing actually persists, and no thing actually disappears. Any more than Mickey Mouse arose, endured, and then at some point goes away. Because there's nobody there. It's an illusion. And then the last one is quite beautiful. He simply, he simply says, um, Oh, how, how did he put it? Delighting in the personal realization of Buddha knowledge. Of course, what we're talking about here is that Buddha knowledge. But to not just take it in as this intense practice, but to delight in it, to savor it, to taste the sweetness of recognizing that the world isn't a threatening place, that there's no objective reality out there imposing itself on you, that all of it is a creation of the mind, of the mind and therefore has no absolute reality to it. That is freedom. And that's the bodhisattva. Right? Those are the practices that empower you to see through all of the illusions that humanity is suffering from. Humanity is suffering from delusion. The three poisons of 
ignorance. Look around. Those do not define it. They don't know what does. Those are the poisons from which you must free yourself. And to do that, there is that practice. Perceiving the non-existence of external existence, you are perceiving only your own perceptions, which, which gives you complete and total control over what you allow yourself to think, to feel, to see, to experience. Who are you in all of that? You're the one to whom all of this is appearing. The one that is inviolate, unchanging, timeless, no beginning and no end. Yes, I agree. It's a mind virus. I agree what you said about the virus, GP. On the same page, Kate. Dale Wiggins says, just FYI, I'm not sure I'm seeing all the comments. Didn't see your link to speak nor the message from david and elaine spelling all right let me put the let me put the uh link to speak in again wonderfully wonderful reply to me uh, john Johan, john sheehan thanks gp my eagle has landed into the soft yay <laughs> vicky says thanks gp i have to call it it was nice to be in your audience thank you for these healing world sessions and the prayer as we go through what is happening in the world right now thank you to vicky uh, glad to have you here. And yeah, we are getting up on the two hours. I wasn't going to try to push it. I mean, I, I can't stay longer, but um, I'm going to do this again next Tuesday. I'm just going to keep doing them at different times of the day to get different people. As long as there's an interest, um, I'll keep doing it. So let us, let's end with uh, uh, just a short meditation um, on this idea of the, of, of of our perceptions and this deeply held belief in an, in an external world, an external existence. So close your eyes. And just kind of let your breathing slow down. Notify your body that we are switching gears. That we have chosen now to withdraw from the world, or rather our perception of the world, into the inner space where truth gets discovered. You can just start with the breath. Let your attention be there. Some of you be maybe more experienced and can, and your attention can move very quickly from the breath more inward beyond thought and feeling. But if you're more new at it, it's fine. Just be on the breath for a minute. Let the breath be deep and slow. Notice how it feels. And then let your attention sink even a little bit more deeply. And notice that you are aware of that breathing, that there's something very real that's aware of the breath going in and going out. And it's aware of all of the thoughts, aware of everything that we've talked about so far. And just notice that thoughts come and go. Emotions come and go. Sensations come and go. And they're all appearing and disappearing to something that doesn't disappear with them. It doesn't come and go. Let's not give it a name. <laughs> There's just this place that you are looking from that is seeing all of this activity. Now,
pay attention to the the sense that feeling that is the body this field of energy that we feel as the body and now without referencing vision right? without vision there's no form something doesn't have a discrete form Notice that when you're feeling your body, that the knee has a very certain kind of energetic feel to it, as does your feet and your ankles. They're definitely a certain kind of energy signature to it. And as you're feeling these things, the mind will almost certainly try to give you a picture of it, but we're not looking at them now. We're feeling them. You just say, thank you, mind. I, I don't need you right now. And just, and just feel that energy. Now, when you're just feeling it, is there anything in that sensation that tells you that consciousness ends there. In fact, you're aware of that sensation. Are you not also aware of a space in which that sensation is appearing? Now, the sound of my voice that you're hearing, speakers or headphones or the like, the mind will imagine it originating maybe thousands of miles away. But where are you hearing it? Is there anything in the actual experience of hearing that tells you that hearing is taking place somewhere else. There is clearly a belief that it is. Looking at the belief, we're trying to look at our experience directly without the presumption of the belief to see what are you actually experiencing? You experienced your hand, but you also experience simultaneously the space around the hand, don't you? So does consciousness end at the hand? Or is consciousness the space in which the hand is appearing? Don't consult your mind. What is your experience? This is a very simple but direct inquiry into the actual nature of your experience without the assumptions and beliefs that have been laid on your circumstances or on your experience. Do you actually experience a boundary between you and the rest of the world? This may be difficult to swallow because the belief is that, yes, there is. But can you actually find it when you look for it? The answer is no, you can't. So now, which are you going to believe? The beliefs or your own experience? You are the space in which the world appears. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how far away it seems. The entire universe is in you. 
the idea that you are bound by this body is a belief. It has never been true. The only place you experience anything is in consciousness. And consciousness has no boundaries. All right, take a nice deep breath. Just relax a little bit for a second. Just take that in. And then uh, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. You see, when you actually go looking for this boundary between you and other, you can't find it. That's because it, it's a belief. It's a construct of the mind. It is, a, it is a distorted perception and it is not true. It's why Buddha said, perceiving the non-existence of external existence. There is no external existence. Consciousness is one and everything is contained within it. Um, I'm noticing here, yeah, Dale says, thank you for being, no, no, Dale said, yeah, weird, still no, like, I, you know, I see it happening. When I post something, because I'm broadcasting simultaneously now to YouTube and Facebook, I am seeing both the comments from Facebook and YouTube uh, put together on a stream that I'm, so I'm seeing, I'm seeing all the comments, but if you are on YouTube, you're not going to see Facebook comments. If you're on Facebook, you're not going to see YouTube comments. And it appears as though uh, when I post a link, it's not getting posted to Facebook. Um, it's supposed to be, but I do understand, especially now because of the bandwidth thing, Facebook may not be handling that. So next time what I'll do is I'll have an iPad here or something where I can post it in, in both places. I could even, I'll bring up a Facebook link and I can post it there as well. Um, and I might even be able to put it in an email um, in advance. So uh, Eva says, teaching flowing through you, brilliant, clear, and very helpful. Great satsang. Thank you for being here. Dale says, ah, makes sense. Cool. I prefer to normally anyways, but it sounds like you need to check to check both. Yeah, it puts together the comments. So I see all the comments in one place and interspersed. But um, you may need to check both. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see the entire uh, flow of, of, of comments. Oh, wow. It's a long day from early, early this morning. I had like um, two interviews in private session <laughs> today before I got online with you guys. And I'm, I'm, a, bit, uh, I'm a bit tired. So um, I'm going to be doing this again. Uh, as always, I'm, I'm trying to keep up with some daily meditations as best I can and some stuff for, uh, EFT and tapping to try to keep, uh, trying to keep, I hope keep everybody, um, everybody centered. Um, please like, and share this, please tell other people about it. Um, and these are all free of charge, but if you, uh, if you feel the impulse to, uh, contribute to help me keep this all on the air. Uh, gpwalsh.com slash donate uh, will uh, bring you to a place where you can make a donation as low as one dollar and uh, believe me it, it it has helped and there's been a lot of support coming over the last couple of weeks to help me keep this going because um, it does come completely out of my my uh, my own uh, my own pocket um, so um, yeah this is how we can uh, support each other and um, I'll uh, I'm, I'm glad that the technology held up as well as it did. It only blanked out really once and a couple of bumps in the road, but it, uh, it, it held up. 
kudos to uh, Facebook and, and, and Google for, uh, for, for that. And um, Jesus, nice to talk to you, G. We appreciate all your guidance. Uh, thank you. There's, there's the link. Uh, Dale saying hi from YouTube. Now also hearing back, also hearing people talk. Thanks, GP. Good. Yes. I'm not getting your posts here. No, you're not getting them all on Facebook. Right. But you'll be hearing me. You'll be hearing anybody add to the stream on both. Um, so I'll just figure out. Uh, Facebook should have been showing my posts. But it, I'm seeing as I'm looking at this, it's grayed out. So it looks like they weren't. But I'll, I'll check with the people who provide this service. Um, it's really the best one out, out there for what, what we're doing. So in the meantime, everyone, um, stay safe. Um, help each other. Remember to not give in to fear. That fear can, can appear in our lives, but it has no meaning other than fear has appeared. It, don't interpret it. Don't own it. Don't think you have to get rid of it. No matter what the fear is, no matter what the feeling is, no matter what it is, simply don't engage with it. Let it come, let it be there, and it will pass away because it, it cannot survive without your attention. So there you are, there you are folks. Uh, so good to be here with you. And I'm going to do this again next Tuesday, this time in the evening. Hopefully I'll get some of my Australian friends in. There are some people on the um, on the West Coast who have who are working. Well, everybody's working at home now, but uh, more people can can probably join. I'll probably even do uh, one of these uh, maybe next Saturday as well to try to get uh, more people involved. So uh, thank you all for being here, and um, until next time, I love you all. Namaste.